Um, are you anticipating more folks or do you want to? Uh, let's kick see. We off? have one, two. Can you hear me, Hank? Four, five, six. Uh, I can barely hear Hank. No, it's coming to my phone. Yeah, hold on. Will you guys, Mike, we can hear you. Can hear you fine. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven. We yeah. have all the commissioners here. So, I mean, uh, when you want to proceed, Mr. Chairman, it is 7.30. I have started the recording. Uh, you are set to go. Okay, so let's uh, call the February 3rd, 2021 meeting of the Historic District Commission. Um, Hank, I see it is uh, 731 for the record. Um, the first order of business tonight, Hank, I think is uh, we have to make a motion to defer the meeting minutes to the next meeting because we have not received them yet. That is correct. So we had anticipated having them to email to you, but we don't have them ready as of yet. Uh, it's our anticipation that we'll have them easily by the next meeting. Um, our new minute taker has pretty much caught us up on all of our boards or commissions, which I greatly appreciate, but uh, we did not get these in time to get them to you. Okay, um, so, if, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'll, go, I'll, I'll move to defer the minute, Perfect. sorry, jump the gun to, no, the, uh, to the next meeting. It should be March 2021. And could I have a second, please? I'll second that. Thank you. And um, all in favor, please say aye. Do, roll aye. Do we have to roll it, Hank, on this one? Yeah, I'm sorry, Chris, if you okay. wouldn't mind it, because th this way the minute taker can. Not a problem. I wasn't sure if this was a big enough issue, but let's, uh, Louise, you're up first. Aye. And then we have uh, Mr. Fink. Aye. Robert. Aye. And uh, Steve, you're next. Aye. And then we have Jim. Aye. And then we have Martha. And Martha was on mute, but I'm pretty sure she said aye. And I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say aye as well. Thank you. So let's move right into our first order of business, which is uh, we have two applications on the table today. So we'll start with the matter of an addition for the Zacharias residence. Mr. Two. Chairman, there is nobody here, is my understanding, for that particular one. I'm okay. going to ask that you defer that and switch the two numbers. If nobody shows up, then uh, we can okay. discuss it then. Do I need to make a motion to do that? or can Yes, we just... that'll require somebody making a motion to, to switch the agenda items in you order. You go here. And then uh, you'll need a roll call vote for that as well. So, I'll move to... Uh, you, you're seeing everybody. I'm, I don't see myself. But. Okay. Mike, Thank you can you. hear everything. If you wouldn't mind muting yourself until I'm you're sorry, ready. Hank. I'm very sorry. Okay. So, could I have a second, please? I would second. Okay. So, I think Steve got there first. So, we'll do a roll call. So, Louise, you're first. Yeah. And then we have Mark. All right. Robert. Aye. Steve. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Martha. Aye. And I'll say aye as well. So we will push to the matter of a garage driveway alteration for the Heller residence at 26515 Dundee. And I see some familiar faces on the Zoom call today. So nice to see everybody again. Thanks for coming back. And um, why don't you feel free to go ahead and present your application? Thank you, Chris. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Ostrowski of Ostrowski Design Group. I'm here with my uh, associate, Peter Ostrowski, um, also with Ostrowski Design Group. And we are the firm representing David and Gail Heller of 26515 Dundee in Huntington Woods. And we are also prepared the design documents that will be presented and we will be discussing. Uh, there are six design features and discussion points which we are presenting tonight that are different from last month's presentation. 
they're as follows. Uh, number one, the proposed driveway finish is different. There is only one design proposal being presented for the west elevation garage door infill. The proposed landscaping has changed. The views from Alligator Park and Nadine Road toward the residence have been investigated and will be presented. The historic character and distinctive features of the asset have been investigated and will be presented. And finally, a revised direct responses to the Secretary of the Interior's 10 standards of compliance. Again, we are asking for a certificate of appropriateness regarding our proposal, which includes a repositioning of an existing garage door from one elevation to another. We submitted existing and proposed engineering uh, engineered site and landscaping plans, as well as original, existing, and proposed architectural elevations. We also submitted new drawings, photographs, and renderings, which illustrate and define our design intent. To begin, I would like to present the photo of the existing residence. Hank, if you can uh, turn this over to Peter, he can uh, put the photo up of the uh, front of the house. I'm going to allow him to share the screen as well. Okay. So he should feel free to put his designs up. Okay, I think that's up. In mm -hmm. And let's pull this up. There it is. Okay. Perfect. Maybe a little slipping shovel. We do suggest a hair, Pete. And we're getting pictures on the uh, part of the screen. Can everyone see the uh, total front of the house? Yes. Mm, yes. Okay. All right. All right. The original residence, which we are looking at here, was designed by the Royal Oak firm of Warden and Price. Built in 1939, it was known as the Franklin Mills House. Per the renowned architectural preservation research team of Virginia and Lee McAllister, the reference book, A Field Guide to American Houses, published by Alfred Knopf in 1984, identifies this residence as a prime example of French eclectic circa 1915 to 1945. The main historic characteristics which they know and which we find on this house are as follows. Number one, steeply pitched hip roofs without dominant front cross gables. And you can see they are wrapped all the way around. There, Peter's showing them and over to the right. Thank you. Uh, brick and stone wall cladding with brick coined corner detailing. This is on all edges of corners of the house. Asymmetrical massing with a predominant round tower with a high conical roof that serves as the principal entrance. Oh, thank you. Um, window dormers are gabled and positioned through the second floor cornice. This is characteristic through the whole facade of the property. Varied hip roof lines and massings at various heights. Large chimney of brick, stone, or both materials on the front or side elevation. Mixed materials, i.e. brick, limestone, and wood siding in the upper window gables. Unadorned provincial oak entrance door set in a simple recessed arched opening. And the original windows were steel sash casements with mutton detailing. Any questions? Okay. Next, okay. I would like to show the additional photos that we sent to Hank. Pete, can you turn that back over to Hank? There you go. Thanks. Okay. Uh, hold on just a minute here. There you are. Okay. Uh, 
just to be clear, um, Mike, what we've done is is that we had the original thing, and I put these in with it. Okay. But we do have some renderings that were sent as a PDF, and again, uh, the laptop doesn't have the same capabilities as from work. So I just want to explain that I'm going to have to switch a couple times for you to, in order to get your render. That's fine. As long as everybody else, I, I know what I'm looking at. I just want everybody else to know what you're looking at. Um, this photo, which you can see is the, um, oh, nope. Hold on. I'm getting it. Yep. Oh, there it is. Is that the one you want? That's it. Okay. Uh, this is the existing uh, south elevation of the property. Um, the existing landscaping totally blocks the side of the residence, which obscures site patterns and blocks the visual access to the asset. I mean, the only thing you can see from this elevation is an upper window uh, just peeking um, next to the gabled, or excuse me, the hipped roof sneaking between the, uh, that edge and then the uh, second floor in the uh, background there. Everything else has been blocked by all the, uh, the, land, the overgrown landscaping. Okay. So this is, this is the area which we are looking at to open up the uh, viewing of the asset. As you can see, as I said earlier, the, that landscaping is right underneath the soffit overhang of the, of the, of the side of the garage. Um, next, Hank, I would like to go to sheet L1, which is the existing, so oh, you, you blow it up there, you can see, there you go. Okay, L1. Um, uh, sheet L1, or, I'm sorry, we want S1, I apologize, this is the, um, If you recognize uh, it, L1 let me is know. the oh, you're right, Hank. I apologize. Yeah, the existing site. This is the existing site plan as it as, as <laughs> it exists today. Here you can see the main house set in the on the uh, site itself, uh, the garage, which is um, closest to the bottom of the drawing. You have a driveway that sweeps to the left, um, to the west, and is a 1,320 square feet of concrete with the uh, majority of the landscape being shown, which blocks the, um, the asset, but then this is how it is set on the property. Um, next, I would like to go to sheet uh, L1-1. Is that it, Mike? No, uh, no, it's the, uh, shows the uh, visual field from Alligator Park. Was it a picture? No, it was a drawing, L1 dash L. Okay, is it, can you give me an idea of what it is? Because we had to crop some of these to get them on here. Oh, it's the, uh, uh, again, it's a site plan that has um, alligator park shown that shows the uh, visual next. Is that one, it? Next one. No, I that's think it's, it's S1 dash one, isn't it? That L. One, yeah. Hank, it was with the renderings that. Oh, okay. no, it's not. Never mind. I'm sorry, it is not. I made a mistake. It should be the, well, it's the second page of the paper copy, but it's S1-1. Right. And it shows the views of where the renderings are taken from, basically, is what it's trying to convey. Is that, okay, hold on a second here. Was that what you were looking for? Well, no, no it's the um, one of the questions last um, last meeting was the fact that um, the drawings that we're we're looking for is the fact that uh, from the view of from Alligator Park looking at the asset and then okay, it was I have L one A one A two A three A four A S or A five rather. It's A6. L I have S1 dash one. Point one. L1 point one. Okay, you're seeing what I have. That's A5. No, but you're seeing what I have as my list here. 
Um, Hank, yeah. if, uh, <laughs> Nick, if you give me the control, I can bring it up again. I was going to say, well, I'm sure one of the two guys who have, designed well, it have it. Yeah. Okay, who ha who has it? Peter. I've got it. Peter, okay, so you can still share. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, can you, you see my share. screen? I see you. We see you. We do not see your screen. Oh, let's share my screen. There we go. How's that? There it is. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Mm -hmm. This okay. Can everyone see that now? Yep. Okay. So last month, um, uh, one of the issues brought up was the fact that a concern was made if the garage door is relocated, that people in Alligator Park will be able to see directly into the resident's garage. In reality, where the garage door is now is that people in Alligator Park are able to see into the garage right now. So with us moving the garage door to that south elevation, nobody from in the, in the park will be able to see into the garage itself. And that the only person seeing, if you're walking along the street or if you're driving by the street, like any other property in this area, you can see into the garage. So this was one of the things that I thought was important or that was brought up that um, is now um, um, uh, taken away from, um, I th we think, a uh, issue. Okay, thank you, Peter. Yep. Um, is, is there is there not uh, landscaping obscuring the, the garage from most of the view shed you just uh, illustrated? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jim. I... Uh, yeah, so the, the view shed you're showing from the park, I just want to get clarification. Yes. Um, my understanding is there is a, a row of arbor vitae or, or some kind of uh, tall hedge that obscures most of the, the view shed that you're, you're showing here into the garage. Is that, is that no longer the case? Uh, well, there is some arbor vitae down at the uh, at the bottom, but the the really the main point is the fact that uh, if we do change the um, the garage door, there will be no view whatsoever from Alligator Park. I think to differ. So, so this is showing the existing conditions with the right. garage or the driveway. Those existing conditions and then the proposed conditions. But if in the new plan, obviously the, the landscape pulls out towards the property line where the driveway is presently and it would That's create correct. a different frame of view with the new landscape plan That's compared correct. to what's and here. This will show, as you can see, uh, there's an elevation mark of A6, which is the uh, rendering that does show that how that landscaping does block that uh, um, that back area, correct. So if you block it, then that means you can put a hole in it. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, Peter, I'd like to go to uh, sheet L-2, which is a proposed site plan. And I know we did go through this um, last month, but for the um, for people that weren't commissioners that were not at the meeting, uh, we just want to go again over the fact that we are showing where the new garage door is located on the existing garage already. Um, we're just relocating from the uh, west elevation to the south elevation. Um, we are extending the landscaping to the left, which is uh, will be incorporated into some of the existing large arbor uh, vitae, which are along the west um, side of the property, and we'll be replanting a lot of the existing larger arbor vitae along uh, between the two pieces of property. Um, so by doing this detail, uh, we're able to. Um, uh, this is our major design intent by relocating uh, the garage door to the uh, south elevation. 
Uh, next piece, I'd like to go to uh, sheet A1. Unless anybody has any questions regarding the uh, the, the, the proposed um, plan. I have one quick question. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, Robert, you're first. Thank you, Chris. Um, the new plantings, of what height are they going to be when mature? I'm sorry, you were, you were broke up there, Robert. The new plantings, Yes. what is their height going to be? Those will be a minimum of eight feet. So you so, have the, so the arbor shorter vitae, down. the arbor vitae along the fence line will be approximately. No, not those. The, which the new, the That's new plant in the south end. Yes, Mike, you're echoing again. Uh -huh. All right, let me turn. How's that? There you go. Okay. So, okay, Robert, so you're talking about the new plantings along the fence line of the pool? Is that what the ones you're asking about? Along the south end where your cursor is. Um, okay, the south end, yes. You have a row of approximately six to eight feet of arborvitae, which uh, abut to a uh, fence. In front of that, you have um, uh, grasses, which Just are- Just the area is what I want to focus on, please. Um, so those are substantially shorter. Yes, than are, about six. Than the arbor vitae that are in place. Correct. So your cone of vision from Alligator Park would it enable greater access visually into the west side mm -hmm. of the garage where the wood doors are placed than is currently yeah. visible. It's absolutely. In fact, you'll be able to see the uh, existing header that is existing. You'll be able to see the coining. You'll be able to see the roof line of the uh, hipped roof. So yes, you will be able to, they, you'll still have privacy. The owners will still have privacy of that back area, but you will be able to, you will be able to see the upper part of the asset, which right now you can you, you cannot really see. Thank you. That's all I needed. Okay. Okay, so uh, if we go to sheet uh, A1, A2 or? No, A, uh, A1. That was A1. Oh. No, 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 A1, which is, is, which is the east and north building elevations. There you are, okay. Um, here again, uh, we're showing the existing uh, front and uh, the north elevation. Uh, these elevations uh, depict the main historic characteristics, which I described earlier. This shows the uh, hipped roof, the uh, tower in the middle with the conical uh, cap, the uh, windows, which are through the cornice, the uh, limestone um, and brick, the coined detailing. Um, and then below you have the uh, large um, bricked uh, chimney, which um, all indicate the uh, French eclectic detailing, which um, um, are really the historic characteristics of the property or the asset. Um, Next, Peter, I'd like to go to sheet A3, which is the existing west and south building elevations. This, Correct. Right. This is the uh, existing elevations. Oh, kind of jumping around there, bud. Kind of hard to. Uh... There you go. Uh, this shows the existing rear west elevation, um, which on the right hand side of the drawing indicates the existing garage uh, and the garage door. Uh, we have a detail indicated by uh, number one on the on sheet A4, which will um, has a uh, exposed original um, painted wood header and then the original uh, 
coined brick detailing as well as the existing uh, garage door. It also shows um, the existing asphalt shingled roof location, the six by six replacement glass block, which is not original to the house. However, there is an original limestone sill and um, uh, detailing uh, roll lock as well as the original brick. Uh, if we can scan down lower, I think we have, um, this is the elevate the south elevation, which as it is existing today, um, on the left hand side, um, where we're looking at the uh, garage, uh, which we are proposing to put the, the uh, existing door into this space. Again, you can see the hipped roofs, the uh, replacement glass block, which has already been um, which is not original. Um, and then to the right, uh, we have the uh, point of uh, the front of the house with the uh, area um, of the main characteristics, historic characteristics, which uh, remain intact. Uh, next. Okay, quick, good question. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, of course. Sorry. Um, the, how do, what evidence is there that this is replacement glass block and, and if we're certain that it's a more modern glass block, what what was there before? Um, and do we, we know for certain sheet. what was the previous material? Correct. If you go, uh, we also presented sheet, I believe it's A2, which is the from the original um, package of drawings. And as you can see, um, there's the original, can you see that, Jim, where the original yeah. uh, window next to the garage and also the... Uh, I think he was looking more for the south elevation. That's just below it. If you can raise that drawing, Peter. There it is. There you go. You see the original south is a uh, steel sashed... Oops, case sorry. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, there you are. Can you see that, Jim? Yep, all set. Okay. So this is a, these are all backwards. Is this a, was this a model home that was then flipped for this site or something? Or why, why is all the text uh, backwards? Well, exactly right. In fact, uh, Hank and I were talking about that just uh, the other day and the fact that these drawings are uh, opposite hand. And on the site, um, it looks like originally that the garage would have been toward the, on the north end of the property, which also would have might meant, would have might um, directed the garage to be open to the uh, Dundee side of the property. So, so what I we just want to, to clarify, is, are these drawings, uh, are they on a title block or something that specifically tie them to this location uh, in Huntington Woods? Or, or are they just a set of drawings that has floated around? Um, I, as far as we know, uh, these are indicated as this site. These are the ones that we were able to find, you know, after the flood. Hank did find some other one. Hank, I don't know if you can uh, um, add to this. Yeah, the original uh, blue drawings, which are original blue drawings that I have in the basement at City Hall, indicate that that particular garage is on the other side of the house. I have no, I have nothing to say that the garage was built at a different time, and uh, I will say that those were submitted at the time that the permit was put because those are the only two correlating items that we have in that regard that I'm aware of. And uh, so I would assume that those were for this property, but the changes were made to the elevations on site or through the then building department. Understood, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, Pete, if you can go to sheet A4. Sorry. Yeah, 
There you are. Thank you. Um, okay. Here um, are the proposed rear or uh, west, west elevation as well as the proposed uh, south elevation. Um, on the west elevation, we are, we are um, looking at when the garage door is removed is installing, um, there you go, Pete. Yeah, I'm just moving it in, eh? Okay, well, if you move to the left, there you are, thank you. Uh, two and a half inch thick stained wood panels and panel doors. The panels are on either side of the garage. Uh, which are approximately 40 inches width and with uh, center doors, which are um, would open to the outside and fold back against the panels. Um, we're leaving the existing um, exposed uh, painted wood header and leaving all the brick detailing, the uh, existing um, um, brick mold, uh, and the only thing that would be removed would be the existing garage door. And this is what we're proposing for the infill. On the uh, south elevation below that, um, we are looking at keeping every detail that is existing uh, intact. The coining would stay, the brick being removed in that area uh, for the existing garage door would be uh, saved. Um, the header um, would mimic or match the existing header that is on the um, opposite elevation. Uh, we have a detail uh, in the lower right-hand corner of the drawing, which um, indicates the original uh, detail, which we will mimic uh, completely. But we'll match it. So there will be no change in uh, that uh, detail. Um, so that is our, the infill proposal. Does uh, anybody have any questions on that? The roof line doesn't change, the corner, the gutter, does, the gutter doesn't change, the downspot doesn't change. The coining doesn't change. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, with putting the garage door in this area, it is in fact wider on the interior uh, than it is going the opposite way as the original. Um, okay. okay, I'd like to go to sheet A5. Uh, let me pull it up. I got a smaller one. That's the wrong one. No, I got a, I got a smaller one that will that we can. Okay. Just bear with me, team. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, Thank you. Was on package, this, so didn't you? Bear with me. Uh, yeah. Peter, that is well, not. If, if, Hank, if you Pete. let Hank take over, I think he has. That'd be great. Package. Yeah, that'd be great. Pete, why don't we let Hank take over? Yep. He has the. Uh, there you go. Okay, hold on and let me see. Got it, Hank? I should have. Hold on just a second here. Is that the one you wanted, Mike? Yes, sir. Big file. <laughs> Does that work for you? I don't see the. We're still waiting for it, Hank. Yeah. Oh. 
unless you're just showing us your file explorer and not your uh, sharing no, your PDF says, screen. Sorry, it, it should be, hold on just a second here. Because the screen share button is still active. Right, hold on just a second here. Let's try this again this way. Do you have that? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, this is a um, rendering of the proposed relocated garage store from in front of, well, in the corner of uh, Nadine and uh, Dundee. Um, you can see to the right of the rendering, the, the S, the, um, excuse me, the uh, French eclectic detailing uh, as carried uh, around to the left-hand side to the south elevation where the garage door is to be uh, asking to be relocated. We've extended the landscaping uh, down along the side of the garage or side of the driveway, which um, will enhance in, uh, the uh, existing landscaping um, and then on the opposite side of the driveway are the arborvitae um, with, the, with the limestone and um, grasses, uh, which add to the um, existing uh, landscaping. And um, in re it really is a, uh, uh, allows us to view the asset even with the uh, extension of the landscaping. Um, if you go to uh, sheet A6, Hank, uh, does anybody have any questions on this? I'm sorry. Um, only that I, from what I see, the rendering here shows uh, the landscaping extended to the south along the driveway where Correct. the proposed site plan does not. I just wanna make sure I understand what's really being proposed. We are proposing to extend the landscaping down on both sides of the driveway, absolutely. Okay, so that I, I, what I'm seeing in the drawing uh, for the site plan does not indicate that. So I wanna make sure that, that we, Hank, you're hearing that if, if the true proposal yeah. is to bring that landscaping down, that may, may have an impact. And just for a point of clarification, is that uh, when you cut down to the bottom of the driveway, there's a minimum of 10 feet from the bottom of the driveway as it goes up the proposed driveway? that it will have to be clear in order to provide vision for backing out so that you don't obscure or actually risk hitting somebody on the sidewalk. And there isn't that now, is there? No. No. Um, here is uh, sheet A6, which is a rendering of the proposed relocated garage door from in front of Alligator Park. So this is if you were standing um, uh, by where the sign is and you're, you're in the middle in the street. Again, uh, I think Robert, this addresses your uh, question in the fact that you're able to see uh, over the top of the newly planted Arbor Vitae uh, to the roof lines, to the coining detailing, um, which allows for uh, opening up uh, some visual um, uh, lines to uh, view the um, asset, which are asset, which are not available now. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any uh, initial questions on any of the renderings or any of the uh, drawings? Um, if not, I would like to continue. Um, as we talked about, there are four main fundamentals to our design proposal. Uh, the first one is uh, asset design preservation and renovation. Number two is an asset character retention and material repurposing. Uh, three is a selective and sensitive demolition. And finally, number four is the new design and construction considerations. The first, the asset design preservation and renovation main points are as follows. The spatial relationship of the proposed relocation of the existing garage door does not change the orientation or function 
of the original garage. The curb approach and driveway remain on Dundee Road and the south, the south elevation of the property. The existing door, door size, door material and proportion stay intact. The, the door header and framing detailing will be preserved as well as all brick coining. The garage will become more functional as the proposed new door location can take advantage of a wider interior dimension. The function of the existing space will be maintained as well as enhanced. The proposed renovation will allow for greater unobstructed view of the asset, secured across to the rear of the property, secured, excuse me, secured access to the rear of the property, as well as the new multifunctional, uh, as multifunction as a carport. Number two, the asset character retention and material repurposing main points are as follows. All removed brick from the south elevation will be carefully removed, cleaned, and saved. The existing garage door will also be removed from the west elevation and repositioned as indicated on the south elevation. The newly constructed exterior exposed garage door header frame brick mold trim will match the existing in material form and finish. All reinstalled existing brick will match bond detailing and mortar color. Number three, selective and sensitive demolition main points are as follows. The existing 1,320 square foot of concrete curb approach and driveway is being removed as well as the freestanding basket, basketball backboard. The existing south side landscape material, will obscure, which obscures the garage facade is being removed, which will allow for unobstructed viewing of the asset. All other freestanding major plantings are being replanted along the outside edge of the west property line. This is indicated on the drawings which we looked at in sheets L1 and L2, as well as the renderings sheets A5 and A6. All other materials to be removed, which is only brick, will be handled as indicated earlier. Finally, the new design and construction considerations are as follows. Garage for relocation and new replacement wood double doors with wood side panels as indicated on drawing sheet A4. The proposed 20-foot concrete driveway installed on the south side of the property is extending from the proposed relocated garage door to the public side sidewalk and new concrete curb and pole, which is more in keeping with the historic driveway configuration. This, indica this is indicated on sheet L1. It is also a 56% reduction of concrete driveway, which is given over to landscaping. A uh, new four foot tall open metal fence with gates as indicated on the drawings. Uh, new plantings, which will blend seamlessly with the existing overall landscape plan will also allow for greater unobscured viewing of the asset as indicated on the drawings uh, sheet L2. Um, at this time, I would also like to address respond to the Secretary of the Interior's 10 standards used by the Historic District Commission to determine if a certificate of appropriateness should be issued. Unless anyone has any other questions. Okay, thank you. Um, per the uh, 10 uh, Secretary of the Interior standards, uh, I'd like to address each one individually. Uh, number one, the property is staying as a residence and the relocation of the garage door is not changing the existing character, function, materials, features, spaces, and or, spatial re or special relationships. The historical character of the property is being retained and preserved. As our design intent shows, the integrity and historic characteristics of the French eclectic style are untouched and properly maintained. No changes to the property will create a false sense of historical development. All previous changes or alterations to the property are being retained and preserved. All distinctive materials, features, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship are being preserved. All historical features are intact and require no repair or replacement. No chemical or physical treatments are required on any materials. All architectural resources, if any, 
will be protected and preserved in place, and if disturbed, mitigating mitigation measures will be undertaken. The proposed garage alteration will save and repurpose the existing brick. The new work will be compatible with the historic integrity of the property and its environment. All new construction is designed in a way that will allow that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the property and its environment would be impaired, be unimpaired. <laughs> Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation. Really appreciate the, the depth of research and the amount of drawings that you provided. Hank, I think it's uh, it bounces back to you, right? Yeah, um, it, it just so there's there's really not much that changes from what we went over last month from um, from the city perspective. Um, basically, this is coming to you uh, again because of changes that were outlined by Mr. Ostrowski in the plan. Otherwise, uh, you know, if it was exactly the same thing, we wouldn't bring it back but it is changed differently and some perhaps clarification was offered by Mr. Ostrowski on the part of the Hellers. The uh, standards that really um, would concern you with this one in particular are standards nine and 10, and those are typically what would happen with this. The driveway and rerouting of that are something that was discussed in the recent training. And uh, you can have a discussion certainly about that. Uh, and then standards nine with new additions, new alterations, exterior alterations or related new constructions shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing size and scale and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. And again, this is something that you should discuss uh, as well as 10. And it says new additions and adjacent or related new construction shall be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. And basically, um, that one really kind of comes into play a little bit because the original opening for the garage door as it exists is being kept in place. So what Mr. Ostrowski's done with his design essentially is keep that and it would be a matter of taking the door that's there and putting it on the south elevation without changing the opening that's on the west elevation. And that if, if and the position would be with that, and uh, Mr. Ostrowski, correct me if you think that I'm wrong here, but that if there was going to be removed and put back into the opening, that it would fit as it always did. Correct. Right. Okay, and then on the south elevation, um, what you're really planning is to take out the window that was there and take that side and put it in there. And the, really what this all comes down to, because the pool would be an administrative decision, the fence would be an administrative decision. What we're really talking about is the rerouting of the concrete and the change to the garage, the accessory structure. So, um, that's really where you're at with that. At this point in time, uh, the standards really speak for themselves. Nothing has changed since the last time. I'm sure that you all have your own thoughts about them and I would encourage your discussion between them. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have as I'm sure Mr. Ostrowski does, but I, the plan and the level of detail that Mr. Ostrowski has presented to the Historic District Commission are very straightforward and understandable. So, but if you have any questions, I'm certainly happy to answer them as I'm sure he is. I have a question for the chair, please. Chris? Yes. Um, I have two photographs that I would like to screen share to get clarification from Mr. Ostrowski as to their um, legitimacy. Are these, um, is this what is really going to be happening? Hold, hold on, please, Robert, please. Let, me, let me enable you to be able to do that. And then what do I do? Just click on the image? Well, no, what you, you do is you go share screen. At the top of your screen, there's a, a button. Yes. It'll say share screen. Yep. Hit share screen and then select the file that you want to share. Got it. We'll help you through it if you need it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
Is this going to allow me to get to my desktop? Yeah, you, when you, hit, yeah. you hit share screen, yeah, press I'm the green our, button that's at the bottom. Right, and I hit files. And then it'll, your, your screen, your desktop or application will come up, okay? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. And then you, um, what kind of computer do you have? Mac. Okay, I can't help you. Do you, do you have the file open on your desktop, Robert? No, but I can open it. If you open, open it, it and then do share screen, you should see that window floating and you'll be able to select the file that's open. At least I hope. I'm not a Mac guy either, but. Right. And then oh. see if you can get it to do that and then click on it and see if it comes forward. Well, I've opened it. So now you click on the file screen share, or excuse me, the share screen, and you should be able to hopefully select that image then. No, it's not coming up. Uh, uh, you should be able to, if you have it in another tab, you should be able to, once you're into the share mode, then you should be able to click on got it. that tab. You got it? Let's so, see. Robert, try moving your cursor down to the bottom of your screen. There you go. No. There Perfect. you go. Right. Mike, is the bottom picture what the house is going to look like? uh pretty good it's yeah but the the door is too high okay it's not, it's, that, you've got that door is up to the underside of a probably a brick but it's going to have a, a wood header above that okay and it's a straight it's a straight shot um driveway but i mean i understand what you're saying and then the landscaping is on the right hand side is going to be coming down toward the side of the garage. But in essence, the, I mean, for what you've done, the garage with the door you know, is pretty accurate what it's going to be looking like. Yeah, it's reasonable, but you know, it's uh, not exactly, but close is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, if that, if, yeah, the garage door is going to be on that edge, correct? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm seeing here. And I, I'm happy to discuss this later if this isn't the appropriate time. Is that the top image shows this rather blank wall with overgrown shrubbery in front of it, mm -hmm. um, which draws the eye to the body of the house. And in the renovated version, the eye goes directly to the garage. That becomes a focal point. Right, that becomes the new focal point. Well, I think I think that um, with the is that, that, that landscaping wrong? is not. I'm going to encourage people at this point in time to go through the chair before speaking. I'm so, sorry. So we have to. I mean, so Hank, first of all, just from an order standpoint, because I seem to have lost my post-it note, <laughs> is it is it time for public participation or is it discussion among the commissioners right now? I'm sorry. <laughs> Typically what happens is, is that there's public participation only from the standpoint that it allows the commission time to comment on anything that the public may bring up and would allow Mr. Ostrowski or the commission to address any questions, concerns, or comments from the public. I'm happy uh, to back off this now. I just want to yeah. get no, a I think, from no, And, no, I and think Robert, you be... could certainly put that back up. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's just move to the public participation first. And then, Robert, when we move from discussion points, I think that was a good tool to help us um, rally around some discussion points. So at this time, I do see some other folks on the phone call or on the Zoom call. And if um, if there's anyone who would like to speak on behalf of this application, please just do me a favor and state your name and then your address, please, for the meeting minutes. Uh, it looks like um, Mr. Tony Barron would like to speak. If you could take yourself off mute, just please state your name and your address for the record. Hi, Tony Barron, 26318 Henry. I live about three doors down. And just looking at all this, a lot was presented. And uh, I've lived in my few doors down for about almost 20 years, have passed by the house 10,000 times, probably at least. And, uh, and, and it's interesting, the picture that was just shown there, but I, I, I don't think that, that the proposal uh, detracts from the character of the house at all. And uh, that's, that's just my thought of looking, looking at all this. You know, I, I think about this, and also it's interesting, people are talking about the garage door. My garage door, I'm on Hendry, 
but my garage door faces Nadine right into Alligator Park. And I've never, it's just never entered my mind, the sight from Alligator Park and them looking in there. My, my garage door also comes very close, closer, probably about 20 feet closer to the sidewalk, 15 feet closer to the sidewalk than that. It's right, right up there. And it's, it's, that's never entered my mind before, that which was presented before there. Anyways, I just wanted to give those comments and, and I, I was interested in this having lived down the block. And Thank you very much for uh, joining the meeting. Thanks for your comments. Um, is there anybody, oh, I think uh, Beth, would you like to say something? Yes, I would. Hi, I'm Beth Radner. Um, for those of you that were here before and Robert, I know you- Beth, could we here. ask you to speak up just a little bit? I apologize. Yes. Can you hear me now? There you go, thank you so much. Um, I'm Beth Radner and I live next door on Nadine to the Heller property. So I am most directly affected, I think, by the um, proposed um, changes. Uh, and I, um, I also echo what um, Tony Barron said, I really think that the proposal um, just may, just is consistent with the integrity and the character of the home. I think it's just a beautiful home and this majestic look. I think it just, I, I just think it adds, um, adds to the character of the house. And I also noticed that, so I, I live next door and I directly face, my home directly faces Alligator Park and my garage is, I mean, it's like Tony's, although your garage is even closer to the sidewalk, um, but mine is a straight shot down from the garage. And I noticed every um, home around Alligator Park is the same thing. The garage is um, directly facing Alligator Park. And then I noticed that each corner house, so the Hellers and then the three uh, corners at Dundee and Nadine, or Dundee and Salem for two of them, because the street Salem cuts starts on Nadine. My house is the first house on Nadine. Um, it's all presented the same way. So there's on the side of Salem and Nadine, where those corners are, the house is on one side, faces one side as the Hellers, and then the garage is facing the other corner, which this proposed uh, new plan would be with a straight shot. Um, so this is not inconsistent with what is um, on all other three corners and around the park. And then I, I also um, just wanted to point out, I've lived in my home for 27 years and um, the owners previous to the Hellers did a, a pretty major addition that the city approved um, that you can see pretty clearly um, in the back. And then I, I believe that the owners before that, um, so that was the Fulbies and then the Steinbergs, I believe did something, but you know, I, I can't speak to that. But my point is really that the home has been altered before, um, not the, the front, I don't believe, but um, another part, and this really doesn't, um, it seems to me, anyhow, um, as a lay person, um, seem to interfere with the beauty and the majesty of the home and the, the presentation of it. Um, I, I think it enhances it. So um, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to speak on from the public who'd like to speak on behalf of this application? Um, I would just like to add, I'm one of Baron's wife. I, I, we can assume the same address. <laughs> um, I, looking at the renderings that you presented, I believe that the new rendering enhances the property. It, for the reasons that Beth described, it gives it a proportionate feeling. Thank you. 
All right. So at this time, um, seeing that nobody else is is going to participate. Make a statement. If I may, I'm you don't live here. I don't live here. I'm an associate of the design group, and if I can address the issue of the uh, photo. Peter, we can't really hear you clearly. Can you speak up? Okay. We have to wait. Can you? Let, oh, is this public? This is yeah. Public. Let me yeah. let me yeah. just close out public, and then we can no, 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 we can no. dig in a bit here to uh, commissioner comments and. So I'm going to close at this time. I'm going to close the public participate participation, Hank. And um, obviously, at this point in time, the commissioners have an opportunity to ask some questions and and um, speak about the application. And I'm just going to go through my screen. So, Louise, you just happen to be first today. Uh, yay! Um, well, the only question um, I have, again, Mike, um, you know, um, I compliment you on doing such a thorough job. Um, we've had few people give us so much information. Um, so thank you for doing that. Um, the question I have, I guess, is to Hank or to Mike. Um, so if we, um, were to approve this project, I'm just wondering if it would be a better idea to have a different kind of header, um, on the new garage door rather than mimicking the one that's original, so it would differentiate from what is new and what well, was old, like a soldier course or a something else. You know what I'm, do you understand what I'm I saying? Understand, absolutely. I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, tried to avoid a false sense of, you know. Well, the detail, uh, number one, the I'm looking back at that photo. Number one, the garage door is only seven feet high. It's not, you know, eight and a half to nine feet tall. So it's a subtle, the door is only seven feet. That header um, uh, allows for um, an exterior detail. I mean, yes, we can put um, a soldier course across there. That's real. I, we, the soldier courses on the rest of the house are really not as um, predominant as you would have nowadays. It's the wood uh, detail is more, uh, I think, in keeping with the style that of the of the house itself. Right. Yeah. My my point was um, just that we don't want to kind of indicate that maybe it was always there. You know no, that we differentiate. I mean, yeah. You know, if that's if that's a, a hindrance, uh, yeah, we could put a steel header. We could put a, a you know, a uh, um, some other material. It would be absolutely. Easy. We can take the brick and we can use it mm -hmm. and make a soldier course across there at seven feet and raise the brick. So it would the door would still be seven feet. It'd be more brick on the top. Um, so that if that is something that uh, I, I don't see a problem with that at all. Okay. For, for clarification, just just so that there's an understanding, there has to be a header there. Right. Something right. has to hold up that portion of the wall. So right. what you're really looking at is what it's going to be skinned with, whether it's a brick or whether it's a right. post beam type thing. Um, right. That's that's really what you're changing or, or not. But the actual structure in order to create the opening is going to require a header. So it's going to be whether it comes through to the outside in the manner in which Mr. Ostrowski's designed it, or whether they use a soldier course or some other brick detail or right. some other detail to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. And the um, you have uh, switched from an aggregate um, on the driveway to straight, smooth yes. concrete. Yes. Um, is that just going to be a um, regular Regular bright, concrete, right? White, because I, I was white looking at the pictures. Talked about, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was looking at the one of the pictures you showed of the sidewalk, and it's, it's yeah. distinctly one. You know, one of those uh, squares is bright white, and the others have you know kind of right. softened into uh, right. softened into the landscape. So the other thing that is interesting regarding just going with that the concrete, the straight shot of concrete there. You know, to where the existing concrete is now is a huge swath of over 1,300 square feet of concrete, which is, you know, such a massive, you know, I mean, we're, we're looking at over a 56% reduction of concrete along that elevation, which, 
I, we feel is, is more in keeping and less obtrusive to the property itself. And so I think by having that straight, even if it is just concrete, you know, it's still going to be less um, um, overbearing than what uh, the existing concrete looks like now. Yeah, half as much. That's great. yeah. Oh, um, yeah. over half as much. Absolutely. And by yeah. taking that concrete out and enhancing it with landscaping, which is going to be bringing the property closer to the sidewalk is going to be more, uh, I think a more in, intimate feel of that, of that whole corner of that whole asset. Yeah, and the, uh, I'm sh certain that the landscape, uh, landscaping you have on there uh, would help soften all of that as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, uh, yes. That's all I have for right now, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Mark, you're up. Um, all right, let me start by saying that I'm, really on the fence here, and I'm not sure which way to jump. Um, I have one concern with respect to uh, the design and the, basically the swapping out of parts from one side of the house to another. Um, I think from a, um, from the sense, from the standpoint of the character of the house, um, I don't have a problem with it, um, but I do wonder whether it creates a false sense of historicity and uh, constitutes a significant change in the historic character of the house. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I would, before, I, before I actually make up my mind, jump one way or the other, um, I'd like to hear the thoughts of my colleagues on the commission. Does anyone want to comment? Chris, you're free to come back to Mark at a later time if you would choose to. Okay. Um, and, but I mean, if anybody wants to dialogue now, is it now appropriate or should we wait? That's up to you. That's up to you. You're, okay. it's your, whether you're going to open it up or you can continue with commissioner comments and then take the comments or okay. if anybody's got a question for the Hellers or Mr. Ostrowski, okay. we'll either just one. Then. And then if, if people, when it's your turn, if you'd like to address Mark's um, and, and have a dialogue, feel free. How's that? Robert, you're up. Thank you. Um, so I see this as really a two part issue here. It's the garage and it's the subsequent driveway new curb cut with the proposed landscaping. The landscaping and the curb cut and driveway wouldn't be an issue if the garage wasn't being altered at all. I see the, the garage and the driveway, the current driveway, the curved driveway as being integral components to the history of the house, to the site of the house, to the environment of the neighborhood. I've spent a lot of time looking at this house and looking at various photographs of it and spending time outside the house. And I was very fortunate to be there when Mr. Heller um, drove his car into the driveway. And when he turned onto that driveway, his car disappeared behind the bushes. It just very elegantly, you know, in a very, very, restrained and 1930s manner disappeared into the garage. There was no noise from garage doors opening or closing. It just disappeared. The curve is something that you don't see any other places Beth pointed out. It is unique to that site and it is a contributing factor of uniqueness to that corner. All the other garages do face the street and they're very common and pedestrian and why you would want to remove that elegant feature and join the ranks of the others is, is something I just don't get. There are um, lots of ways to open up the view of the house that Mike seems to be very concerned about um, without putting the garage door in a different location and that's just pruning. If you want to see the house and Certainly, if you want to see the house, that's how to do it. But I think the siting of the house, the way it relates to the neighborhood is very important. That door 
in its current location, the driveway in its current location and configuration are contrib contributing factors, contributing resources. They're valuable and I don't think they should be changed. If you insert a straight driveway as proposed, you bisect that very large expanse of lawn all the way from Dundee to the current driveway. And instead of having one immense park-like setting uninterrupted by concrete, you, how wide is the driveway by the way, 20 feet? Mm -hmm. You insert a 20 foot division of concrete in that parkland. And that's another uh, destructive element to the site and to the environment. The way that it will focus attention on the house, uh, on the garage, as opposed to focusing on the house is detrimental also, I think. Uh, that's all I have to say right now. I'll have more. Can I make a comment regarding that, Hank, or should I wait? That's up to Chris. Uh, yeah, go ahead and please feel free to, if you'd like to uh, respond. Well, um, right now that concrete, the, 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 as you said, he drives elegantly, moves in there. That's 1,300 square feet of concrete. That's a massive, uh, we're looking at cutting that over half. But uh, half of that, half of the existing concrete is going to be removed and having a short drive to the uh, proposed um, entrance to the garage. Um, the other, the other thing is that it's a, it's a straight shot. Um, we're kind of trading. If you want to, we're adding more landscaping along that area, which is the um, um, to the left of that garage and will tie into the rest of rest of the house. Now you as you know those large arborvitae which are 20 to 25 feet block you know all the views of the back of the house and the side of the house right now. I mean I think we showed one picture that you don't see any of the house whatsoever. And um, you know if if the hellers want to trim the trees they can if they don't want to trim them they don't have to. So um, you know, that's kind of like, um, I, I don't know if that's a trade-off um, that is acceptable, but, um, you know, we feel that the addition of the uh, garage um, on that side of the garage door on that side uh, is not detrimental to the character of the property or the character of the house itself. Chris, may I respond? Sure. The uh, 1,300 square feet of concrete that are in place now are primarily hidden by the curve and by the arborvitae. The smaller amount of concrete that you'll be replacing it with would be directly visible and would appear to be more concrete in place than you actually see now. I, I, you know, I, yeah, so when you it stand depends on where you're standing. It depends you stand on where you're standing. Mike, and you look at it, I'm sorry. it's all hidden all right. by a curve and that curve is hidden by the mature arborvitae, which are only going to get bigger in time. Mm -hmm. And exposing a house, I don't understand the value of exposing a house, um, especially in this day and age. Most people want to conceal what they have as mm -hmm. opposed to showing off what they have. Concealment is a very, very valuable asset in home security and self-protection. Um, but that's, I mean, that's a personal issue. And um, that's I, would, I would agree. Uh, that's Let's move on. We're, we're focused on the on the, right, the okay. alterations, not yeah. about the personal preferences or use of Correct. the occupants. Absolutely. So let's let's Absolutely. just keep moving on, please. So um, Robert, last chance. Anything else before I move on? Not yet. Please move on. Not a problem. Jim, you're up next. Um, thanks, Chris. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the the plan in general has not changed dramatically since the last meeting. I mean, the, the fundamental. Um, you know, design decisions which which relocate the garage door are still intact. Uh, I still have concerns about um, you know the the basic character of the, the home being retained or not. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll jump to Mark's comments, which I do want to respond to. Um, I agree, and I, I think Louise touched on this as well. Is that 
you know, what we're seeing on that garage door is um, essentially we're, we're replicating the exact details as has been described, which I appreciate. But however, um, we, when we look at these historic properties, we, we don't want to um, have a false sense of security and that was where the door was originally. So I think that something like, a, um, you know, if we go to a material for that header, that, that's one thing. It has to be pretty substantially different, in my opinion. The soldier course that exists on the rest of the house, that to me is just replicating a detail in a different spot. Um, I expect to see something like a continuous painted steel header or, or something of that like. Um, I also think that uh, the landscaping, uh, the, the you know, where we saw in the site plan where we have landscaping stopping essentially at the garage and then on the rendering that, that comes closer to the uh, street side. I'd like to see that um, densified as much as possible. The, um, I think what, you know, Robert makes some excellent points um, and I feel that, um, you know, that this house, uh, for me as well, and obviously what Robert was saying, like it transports him back to you know the, the time that it was uh, time that it was built and, and and the experience of watching that you know car kind of disappear behind the, the hedge. Um, my primary point of view is from Salem uh, coming into Huntington Woods. This is a gateway property, so when we see that, uh, and now there's cars in the driveway, um, and yes, that is much more prominent concrete and a much more prominent. Uh, garage door than is what th is there now, that which is behind the back of the house, which was the original intent of the architects that uh, designed the home. So by stripping that away, and I, I'm, you know, I kind of on the fence here because we don't want our, our residents to feel that they can't make alterations to their home. Um, but what this does is it, it fundamentally changes the character of what you see when you you come into this kind of landmark property um, coming into Huntington Woods. So. Um, that said, the yes, the landscaping is overgrown in front of the garage, but I'd like to see a much more dense um, curve or, or something that kind of can mimic what is there now. If we're going to move the garage over to the side of the house, um, I don't want to see the garage from the, you know my my view shed coming into Huntington Woods. That that is a fundamental change to that home that I, I don't think can be ignored. ignored. So I would say that um, you know, maybe it's, it's to Mike or to the Hellers, you know, is that something you're looking, uh, you're, you're willing to consider is kind of re-looking at that landscaping in order to ensure that uh, the view shed doesn't change because you have, as many of us have stated, you have a beautiful home um, and whatever way you slice it, putting a garage in a much more prominent location um, fundamentally changes that character. So I'd like to at least understand how far we're willing to go um, to, to at least try to, to uh, conceal that as much as possible. Uh, may I respond to that? Um, I'm sorry. Yes, please. I'm okay. looking at drawings. Okay. Um, uh, Jim, I, we have no problem with carrying that landscaping down on that uh, side of the driveway, even farther down I mean, I think we can go down to 10 feet, as Hank mentioned, but that, that's, not a, that's not a problem whatsoever. In fact, that's one of the reasons when you see that the rendering that we did bring it down farther and we did show it at the winter time so that you can see, you know, it was kind of like, well, look, let's show it so that you can see through and see the, the asset. But in the summer, that'll all be blocked off to, from that point. So, yes, we would... I, there is not a question of bringing that landscaping down farther toward the sidewalk along that, the front elevation and extending that. I, I'm sure the Hellers and, and I feel, and, and on both sides of the driveway, as a matter of fact. So there is no problem with that whatsoever. We can see to that. Yeah. Issue. One you. other, two one other one. point for, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, let me just interject one other point. On the property as far as screening the driveway one other thing too is that the landscape whenever landscape is is done on most any landscape plans the whole site is considered so a tree a bush or some type of plantings further to the east on the property that may obscure the vision of the driveway but not obscure the vision backing out of the driveway Correct. could also be introduced if that was the pleasure of the hellers to do Right. Uh, and Mr. Ostrowski. That was the point, Hank. That's the point I'm making is absolutely, absolutely. Um, sure. Uh, Hank, one question for you on, on the 
yes, what's sir. allowed in terms of the uh, the um, the view. Or I'm sorry, you guys, we're backing out of the driveway. We need a 10 foot strip. There's a 10 foot from, triangle. Is that from this? Is that based off the end of the apron at the street, or is that at, from the sidewalk? Sidewalk. Uh, That's so from the sidewalk the in. That's from the okay, sidewalk. So you need 10 in. feet between the house and the sidewalk of clear space. That is correct. So there, there will be a triangle that basically, once you back out your car and you look to your right, you could see perhaps a kid on a bicycle or a pedestrian or somebody in a wheelchair. And that's the point of having that clear space. You know, Understood. And so, but that, that triangle, you could essentially, uh, potentially put bring landscaping along along that angle of the triangle though is what you're absolutely you, you could absolutely yeah you know absolutely. jim the other okay. thing that is interesting about this site is the fact that when you come out of that driveway you know that's probably one of the widest areas of, of being able to back out into the street because that's where the split that goes around alligator park is so that is even that street is even deeper than a normal street in Huntington Woods. So there is a lot, there's uh, that that is um, able to, um, you know, let that landscaping just really kind of flow down toward that area. Thank you. Thanks very much. Jim, do you have anything it, else? Oh, just one other oh, point. Oh, sorry. Jim made, um, just about the, um, the header detail, obviously we can change you know, the header detail to uh, either, um, uh, you know, we could put a, a steel header across there. We could put, you know, uh, uh, soldier coursing in there. We could do a, a limestone, you know, header across there. I mean, so they're, they're obviously if, if that makes uh, a difference, uh, I, don't, I don't feel an issue with that at all. Yeah, my, my thought is that we would want to look for material or a detail that does not exist on the property. No problem. Um, so so if it's stone or soldier coursing el elsewhere, um, to me, uh, to me, just me as an architect, I like steel, but I that see. doesn't mean that that's what it has to be. Uh, but no, I also right. think that we wouldn't want to use brake metal or something either. So no. Uh, no, no, no. I think in keeping with the quality of the house, just as long as it's not something that already exists there is, is the way that I would I would go. Jim, I have no problem with that. Not at all. Thanks, Jim. Are you all? all yeah. Jim. Okay, all thank you. Martha? Okay. Um, I guess I'm thinking about what everybody has been saying, and um, I agree with Jim that uh, this is a landmark residence and resource in our historic district, and um, the ambiance that's created with the layout the way it is right now, I'd really like to see protected. And I'm gonna to go to a, a quote that I wrote down during our training last week to remind uh, the rest of the people that were there. Uh, she said that our job is to protect history, do not change the character of the house irreparably. And I really believe that moving the garage doors to the other side of the garage would do that. Um, uh, and the fact that everybody's talking about how many bushes and how many plantings they can put up to hide the concrete and it tells me that you know that this is not, um, this is not going to look as good as it looks right now. And I just have a real problem with that. Um, I, I, I too was there uh, the other afternoon and, and I saw that car disappear and it was so elegant and and it harkens back to a time when the planners of Huntington Woods um, basically made a rule that they wanted garages tucked back behind. Uh, that changed as development continued uh, to um, progress. And then of course, we got to the point during the war where houses were built willy nilly because they just needed to build houses, you know, smaller houses. And that's where the Bronx um, got settled. Um, I just, uh, I, I really feel that this is not uh, a good idea uh, for the integrity of the historic district and <coughs> the integrity of the community which supports the historic district. So uh, that's just my point of view. Chris? Do you mind yes, Louise. Um, well, I just, um, I just wanted to say uh, something to everybody because I was at that same training too. 
Um, it sound, sounds like Martha and Robert were watching the same car um, out there together. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, what I heard um, and took away from that meeting, one of the most important things was that uh, the woman leading the training said, reminded us that these houses are not located in Greenfield Village. And she also made a point of telling us several different times that the national percentage um, you know, um, of historic district approvals is somewhere around 97%. And so thoughtful projects like this one, I think um, deserve to really be considered um, and, you know, possibly approved because it's been, uh, it's been done, uh, looked at from all angles and it's a very sensitive um, kind of reconstru reconstruction or reconfiguration of um, some of the details to let the homeowners use the house um, as they want to. So mm -hmm. anyway, I just wanted to interject there, make sure everybody remembers that. Yeah, that's a, a... Martha, do you have anything else to add for right, right now? Um, no, not at this time. Okay, thanks. Uh, Steve, you're up. You're on mute though, Steve. So I'm sure what you're saying okay, is brilliant. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want you to hear me snoring. Um, <laughs> I, I, I look at the um, Secretary of the Interior Standards and uh, it seems to always uh, refer to um, distinctive features and characterizations of a house and so on. There's been a lot said before me. I had the, the fortunate uh, situation of hearing everybody else, uh, or most of the other commissioners, I don't know if anybody else has not spoken yet, but um, this house is a truly, it's a beautiful house. Before I even moved to Huntington Woods 20 some years ago, I went by this house and I would admire how uh, beautiful it was. And we we're picking brick for my house, which I built on Henry some 23, 24 years ago. I said to the, the builder, I like the brick on that house. And he uh, told me we couldn't get any more because old cold fired brick. It's it's absolutely a beautiful house. Um, however, um, I look at it this way: given the character of that house and uh, where it sits in the city, and all the the true things I've said before by other commissioners, there really wouldn't be anything that this homeowner could ever do to that house anywhere to change one thing. Uh, and I went to that same training uh, seminar or that Zoom meeting uh, that Louise referred to. And um, the instructor who I found to be tremendously knowledgeable and informative and easy to listen to said that, you know, there are changes to the houses that, that you do have to let be made. And I think that removing a driveway, which sits in the back of the house, which is one of the parts of the house that we were probably liable to leave the most uh, just homeowner discretion to or be a little looser about uh, is a big part of this by removing a driveway that sits in the back of a house and um, to relocate it to the side I think is um, does not define the character of that house. Uh, there's so many other features to that house that are far more uh, define its character and its beauty uh, and I think that uh, this is a case where if you're on the fence, uh, I uh, would tend to uh, go to the side of the homeowner because I think that a homeowner has to have a certain amount of ability to uh, change your property for their needs. And uh, this house is of the such that I think that the whole entire house is uh, of, of character. And uh, this is, I think, a pretty minor change. Um, when you look at the entire home and so on, there's a lot of subtleties to it, but I think it's a relatively minor change that they'd be allowed to do. And I think that it's uh, well thought out. I like some ideas about maybe differentiating it a little bit more. I like ideas about reusing things and repurposing things that are currently on the house. And um, I think given what they have to work with and what their goals are, I think it's a uh, 
probably about the, the, the best plan that one could come up with to uh, accomplish uh, the homeowner's uh, needs. So. Thank you, Steve. Um, I guess um, I've got a few things to add. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. Um, so um, just, just a whole number of thoughts. So I think when we're looking at two-dimensional plans, uh, I think, you know, we sort of get sucked into a little bit of a false sense of, of awareness, in my opinion. So I was just, you know, as people were talking, pulled up Google Earth and looked at the house. And, um, you know, I will say that I'm so glad they mirrored this house because I think they got it right. Because the, uh, the way the house is oriented really towards that intersection and that um, tower uh, directing you towards the front door is really what is very striking. Uh, the second thing that I think they really got right on this house is the garage was deliberately the way it was scaled, um, both from the front of the house with the very, very low eave line. Um, the roof, it is, um, and if you look at it in three dimensions, the proportions are such that it is clearly an accessory structure to the main house. It really is designed from a scale perspective to go away. There's a 20 foot setback from the front of the house to make this, this really fade into the background as clearly subservient and accessory use to the main house. Um, and then even on the detailing with, uh, they didn't you know, put the stone on this. Um, they did do the gable on the front, which is very sensitive as, as Michael talked about how they, uh, put those gables on the second story window. So it continued it, but it really is a modest intervention. Um, I think uh, the second thing that really strikes me about this, so um, I would encourage people, I know all of us looked at it, but uh, the second thing, this is about, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael and Peter, the garage door is about 15 feet by seven or 16 correct. feet by seven? 15. Look, 15, so that's 105 yeah. square feet. We had an existing window of approximately nine and a half square feet. So when you look at this house in three dimensions, we're talking less than 100 square foot of change. There's thousands of square foot of material when you look at this house in three dimensions. So I don't consider this a significant change to the character of when you look at the overall proportion, because the house is really intended to be looked at from that corner. And again, I think that the siting and the massing of the house, putting the garage way to the back with everything coming up to the front, is is very unique and that's what's drawing your eye um it's funny but when i actually look at google maps it really wants everybody all the discussion we've had about this we really should get our chainsaws out because you can't even see the front door which is the most striking piece of the house from that corner um, as a gateway piece so i find that to be sort of interesting as well um, when i look at um uh let's see a couple other things here so um so like I said, okay. So when I look at the historic standards, just kind of running through this um, property, uh, just standard one about whether it's being used as it was. Uh, the garage is still the garage. I kind of like that. Um, it's pretty much an enclosed garage. So that, yes, there's a door in it, but I sort of mentioned, I think it's a small intervention when you look at the overall three-dimensional character of the house. Um, and it's solid, so it's not like they're making this a covered porch and radically changing or calling a lot of attention to it. People can tell from the massing, um, they understand that that's a garage. It still is behaving as such, and I don't think it's drawing a ton of um, attention. So I think standard one applies. Um, obviously, I talked about standard two. I think all of the features that Mike went through on the main massing of the house is really all the things that are drawing your eye from the patina on the roof to the shadow lines of the gables, um, the massing. It's much taller than the remainder of this garage. Um, the, the curve forms, the arches, the stone, blah, blah, blah. So I think, um, I still think that this doesn't necessarily change that to any detrimental effect of the overall historic character of the house. Um, let me just make sure primary elevation still remains. It's a solid. Okay, I covered that. It's still secondary to the main in terms of massing and it doesn't cause me shock or concern. I guess my comment with that is it's a garage. People can tell it's a garage and still being used at that. So even though the door appears one day, to me, it doesn't, I didn't change the garage to a, you know, a, a, an indoor pool or something where, so I feel like it's not gonna be shocking in the overall. Um, I think uh, item number five, um, I, we talked a lot about the distinctive materials on the house and sort of the plain Jane approach, the level of the eaves and everything to sort of hide the massing and that the roof lines are low. None of that changes. So I don't feel that um, the brick is truly what's driving the distinct character of this house. I think it's the mixed materials and some of the other materials are truly um, driving this. Um, so I, I feel like we comply with standard five. 
Um, and then standard nine, again, I think, again, I talked about that one by default, I think that it doesn't radically change. And then um, I really do believe that any uh, modifications, again, this is uh, the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. So you are allowed to make modifications that I don't feel that this is, um, you know, really radically changing things. I know that we talked about this before, but, you know, whether the header or something different, I can, I always get a little bit confused on that because we talk about making sure we're using appropriate materials and, but, you know, if the header's back, then you could just re-brick it because the foundation's there if it sticks forward. So, I mean, there's some nuance there that I can be swayed either way. Um, I had another point, but I've forgotten it. Oh, so um, I have a little bit of also, I think this is a specialty condition. A corner houses have a lot of challenges. Um, and um, to me that um, both with the shape of the lot and the corner that, um, relegating most of your yard, rear yard, it is a rear yard to, to the driveway is sort of a unique challenge of this. And I think um, I understand uh, that they would want more green space in that backyard, especially it narrows tremendously to the north side of the property. So I do consider this a unique parcel that has unique challenges. And I do believe corner houses, we see a lot of stuff on corner houses because they are challenging because they have two fronts and all those other things. But I guess I'll go back to, I think the changing of the garage door doesn't change the, the overall character of the property. And, um, you know, maybe this is a is, is an instance because of some of those specialty conditions and things that uh, it might be appropriate for somebody to make a no, um, notice to proceed motion versus um, um, a, a different motion. So, uh, at this point in time, Hank, I've talked so much that I don't remember what the next order is. So I, I'm sorry. Um, okay, all, all of the, uh, I'll help you out. All of the commissioners have had an opportunity to speak. I think it comes um, back to me, please. What, I'm sorry, but Mark did reserve part of his yep, time. Yep, he did. So, so I would go back to Mark. Thank you, and then Mark, you're up. Any other comments? Okay, thank you, Hank um, and Chris. Um, after hearing everybody's thoughts, uh, I think first Robert made a very good point about um, the existing driveway, uh, more or less hiding the entrance into the garage. Um, Chris made a good point about that current driveway in the back of the or entrance to the drive to the garage being in the back of the house is unique as the neighboring homeowners point out, all the other homes uh, in that vicinity, uh, the garage is open onto Alligator Park. This one doesn't, it's the only one that doesn't. Um, and I think that unique aspect needs to be taken into consideration. Uh, Martha made another very valid point, which is kind of kicking around in my mind to begin with. Um, that the discussion about the landscaping, um, if you'll excuse me for mixing metaphors, uh, is something of a red herring. Um, I think it's, it takes the eye off the ball, which is the structure, and simply hiding problems with the, with the proposal doesn't solve the problem of, of uh, whether it meets the standards, whether it changes the historic character of the house, um, whether it's something we'd like or not is totally irrelevant. The question is whether it meets the standards. Um, and I've come off the fence uh, to believe that um, this change, for the reasons I've mentioned, does change the historic character of the house. That's it. Can I, can I uh, just make a comment um, regarding the, talking about the landscaping when you drive into the rear of the house. The only thing that is blocking the garage entrance now is a stand of Arbor Vitae. If those would re, were removed, all you you would see the garage doors. You would see the gigantic swath of concrete. You would see the cars sitting outside the garage if they're not using them or whatever. 
The only thing that is stopping you now is landscaping. It's these arborvitaes that could go away tomorrow and because they're not part of, as you said, you know, hiding something, you know? And so when you see saying that the cars disappear, well, they disappear because of the landscaping. So it's kind of, um, you know, you're saying that you, you, they disappear in the garages in the back, but if you remove the, that, as I said, if I remove those, the, those trees, the arborvitaes, you would see the garage, you would see the, inside the garage, you would see the cars sitting there. There'd be no uniqueness whatsoever. The other point is that when you're at, in Alligator Park, you can see into that garage right now. You'd be able to see all the way along going down toward the neighbor's houses into the garage. And the only time if we change that the drive or the garage door to that other side, there's only one point that you would see that garage as you're driving by. It's not like you're standing there looking at this. So, you know, to say that the, that the, you know, as I said, the garage, you know, the, the disappears and things is because of the landscaping. It's not because of the house and the character of the house, as I think we mentioned earlier, the historical character of the property we feel is being retained. The main property, the main points, as I think a couple of the commissioners mentioned was, it's the massing of the house, the front of the house, all those intricate and delicate details of the front of the house are really the ones that really stand out and really make this house special and make it what it is. And uh, I, I, we're not changing the fact that the garage is there. We're not changing the fact that the, the driveway is still on the same side of the street. You know, we're, we're taking and, you know, enhancing with more landscaping, softening that, that massive, um, as I said, swath of concrete um, by relocating that garage door and extending landscaping that is more in, I think in proportion to the house and which allows the asset or the house to be viewed. You know, and it, we're making it, um, everybody's talking about these views into the garage and things like, but it's the house itself, the totality of the house that is the, the, the importance of the historic characteristic. It's on all elevations. It's not just that in that garage door, you know, that's standing, if you're standing still at one point is what you see. In that area, you're going back and forth and passing that area all the time. So I think that we have to make sure that we are understanding what the historical character of the house is. And that's, I just wanna make a comment regarding that, so. Can I, can I have a, uh, a chance to reply? Um, just to clarify, the uh, landscaping that I was referring to was not the landscaping that is presently there hiding the driveway. I'm referring to all the landscaping you're going to put to hide the new driveway. Well, so. I don't know if we're, I, I, I think we're, we're not saying we're hiding the driveway. I think by the use of our landscape design, we're extending the front of, if you're standing on, say, Nate, on um, Dundee, that landscaping is going to go from the, from the north to the south across the front of the house, which is going to elongate it. Mm -hmm. In the same way, you know, it's not, it's not kind of hiding. I, I don't, I'm saying, we're enhancing everything. It's not hiding it. We don't have a problem with the, gra the garage door there. I'm just saying that we're going to enhance that, bring it down so that we're extending and elongating the, your view from the right side of the, of the massing of the house, which is the, the, chimney on the right side, the hipped roofs, the, the tower with the conical top, the um, uh, uh, hipped uh, uh, dormers of the windows, you know, the setback of the garage, the landscaping of that whole area. I mean, it's accentuating it. And I think that the garage is still staying the garage as uh, Chris has mentioned, you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's one, section it's not the character of that. that that garage is not making the character of the house the character of the house is there it's always there and it's going to stay there and the what we're adding is not detrimental to the character of that house that's my answer so okay i would like to do uh, reply now if i may 
I'm on mute. Sorry, Mark. Go ahead. Okay. Um, once again, I think the discussion of um, seeing into the garage uh, takes our eye off the ball. Uh, seeing into the garage is not the issue. The issue is the placement of the garage door. You have now a garage door that's on the back of the house and we're moving it to a place where it becomes a focal point. And that to me is a major change in the character of the house. Well, I think if I could say something, I think too, um, I, I think I've heard this a couple of times um, from Chris maybe last, that we need to remember that, you know, yeah, uh, maybe moving the garage door um, and it's attached, but it is an ex it's a garage. It's a, an accessory structure. So, you know, we should not lose sight of that. Yeah, and, and, you know, the Hellers want to use their property. I mean, it's not, you know, I think that's part of home ownership. That's part of living in Huntington Woods. That's part of everything else that you're living with is being able to use the property, use your property as you see fit. <laughs> May I say something, please? A child. <laughs> At the training session, which I also attended, and I'm sure Louise and the others all remember this, it was reinforced time and time and time again. The most important issue we have to consider is preservation of the structure. It was not people's use of it. It was the preservation of the structure, which is number one. And it's agreed, it's not Greenfield Village, and we're not creating a historical village here. We are here to make maintain the the original structures as well as can be maintained in a reasonable manner. The garage re relocation, the um, relocation of the garage door is not a necessity. It's simply a want. The pool is not a necessity. It's a want. Uh, the house is perfectly functional. The garage is perfectly functional as it is. Any step beyond that there are those little paper ends on the lamb chops. You don't need it, but they're nice. But are we asking for, we're not asking for a variance. I mean, we're so, not- So, we're, so we're, let me, let me sorry, pop sorry. in here on that. So sorry, but um, again, the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, um, the property owners do have a right to update their home, regardless of whether you agree with the use or not, um, you have to determine if the changes to the property um, negate the overall historic character. So I'd like to make sure that we focus that um, um, they proposed a use for whatever that might be. They proposed relocating the garage door. Let's focus on the changes versus the use, please. I think that would be appropriate. Yeah, I think that, you know, to, to Robert's point, um, and it's very interesting how everybody, you know, focuses in on things that are meaningful to them. But I heard her say um, that during the training that it's wonderful when people want to put money into their homes, it means they're invested, it means the value is in increasing and that, um, that changes like that um, are, are a good thing. Thank you for having to do it though. Hey, hey, Hank, I, th I see you raising your hand, so I'm sorry yeah. I didn't get to you sooner. I'm That's sorry. okay. I, I just wanted to um, clarify a couple things for just for this. The want versus need thing is a ZBA issue. So what you have to do is keep your conversations and your thought process to the standards in the historic district. Um, as a result, because the want versus need is completely irrelevant. So it goes to the Zoning Board of Appeals and that's not where we're at right now. So just for clarification on that, they're entitled to want what they want and they're entitled to need what they perceive they need. Um, what you're there to decide is whether or not it meets the standards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose if it didn't meet any of the standards, you know, I, I might hesitate, uh, you know, to say no, but as Chris pointed out, 
Pete pointed out like four or five of the standards that it actually does meet. So I think we need to be careful, thoughtful consideration. Yeah, I, so, I, I think we've, we've met the standards. You know, we've reviewed them very diligently. We've looked at everything um, that the Secretary of the Interior 10 standards asked for and what is uh, you as the Historic District Commission uses to determine if this is an appropriate um, design. So, so at, at this time, I think it might be an appropriate time. We've had a lot of discussion um, that maybe it's time for um, to close that discussion. And and obviously the the op, you know we put forth a motion and then we can still have discussion on the motion. So at this time, I guess I would like to entertain if anybody on our commission would entertain posing a motion. I would pose a motion, Chris. Please, Steve, go right ahead. And um, I'm sure Hank will be here to help. Hank, feel free to jump in anytime. Um, I propose that we um, issue a notice to proceed for the property located at 26151 Dundee, the Heller residence, uh, in that it meets uh, the Secretary of Interior Standards 1, 2, 5, nine and 10. And um, with um, some changes to be administratively approved for the, um, the header and um, additional screening landscaping uh, down the uh, drive towards the sidewalk. Thank oh. you, Steve. And we need a discussion on, on that. Um, you need a second first. We need a second and then we'll have a discussion. So if anyone would, would like to make a second, otherwise. Um, I will go ahead, this is Louise. I'll go ahead and second that um, motion that Steve made. But Steve, um, if you'll recall the training, I think we need to um, change a notice to proceed to a certificate of appropriateness. Um, because given the four points of a notice to proceed, we don't really, that do, it doesn't really fit. Okay, then. Um, I would okay. suggest to you, Mr. Behrman, that if you feel that it meets the standards, then I would just use a certificate of appropriateness. It, I would uh, change my motion to uh, issue a certificate of appropriateness. Okay, so we have... Um, Steve made the modification. Uh, Louise, would do you still second that? Yes. So now we have some opportunity with the commissioners to have some discussion. And I think Martha, you were you were ready to go. Because I was going to point out the same thing. That's oh, perfect. Yeah, because I Thanks. I screwed up by bringing that into the mix. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Um, is there any other discussion that wants to be had on this motion from any of the commissioners? Seeing none, then um, Hank, I guess we'll do a roll call vote. Yes, sir. Okay, so Louise, you get to go first. Oh, uh, yay. Uh, Mark, you're up next. Uh, nay. Robert? Nay. Jim? Aye. Martha? Nay. Steve? Yes. And I'm a, I'm a yes as well. I can't count. So Hank, hopefully you kept so track. Jim, you were, you were a yes, Jim? Okay. Right. So we have the yeses would be Louise, Chris, Jim, and Steve. That would give four out of seven. That would pass. Thank you. Um, uh, thanks everybody, just for, for the discussion. For clarification, oh. Mr. Chairman, I just want to be clear because the motion that uh, gave administrative authority to uh, the header. So uh, I'm going to take that as to use something with a dissimilar material. If what Mr. Ostrowski brings in is not something that I would consider comfortable with, that part of it and that part of it only I would bring back to the commission. 
And then, you know, I guess what most people noticed probably was that the rendering showed landscaping that was different from the site plan. That's certainly a good reference that uh, reference point for you, Hank, as you administratively handle that. Is Absolutely. That so thanks everybody for the dialogue and the participation um, and thank you applicants. I, I'd like to thank everyone. Um, we worked uh, diligently, uh, we worked thoughtfully and to have uh, this approval um, is uh, a very heartfelt thank you. And I know the Hellers are gonna be excited as we all are. And again, uh, thank you very much. And Gail and I would also like to thank the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, again for the the, um, the preparations was was really great. So thank it you. really helps us to to have a good dialogue. So we appreciate the the work that you everybody thank did. You very today. much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate it, Mr. Uh, Chairman. At this point in time, um, you would go back to the initial item on the agenda, which is the Zacharias residence, and I don't see anybody on that is here to address that. Uh, I will tell you that I received materials for that project late. So I would suggest once again, that you know, even though I do have materials for it, that I would suggest that that project uh, be voted up. There's no applicant here. Um, I wouldn't table it, but I would, uh, I would actually think that you would be in the best interest to deny it and can certainly come back. He hasn't had his first chance to present anything. Um, would you mind if I asked a couple questions, Hank? Certainly. And these are procedural. So, uh, you know, if anybody else, I, I would appreciate some dialogue on this that, you know, looking at the quality uh, of the, the materials that were presented, it made it very difficult for me to even understand what the application was. And, um, you know, the whether I vote on it or table it, it, it seems sort of you know, I don't know procedurally. I mean, I if I would have liked to just say you don't even get an agenda spot because you didn't give me enough materials to make um, a thoughtful decision, and I don't know how to handle those sorts of things, things, in, things administratively. In that case, what I would suggest, I would suggest is that you is that you, you vote it down, vote it down um, for either not enough information or for nobody being here to present the project. Um, he's certainly free to come back and do exactly that. Uh, I can tell you that there has been multiple conversations with this applicant about the plans. Um, he did go from a hand sketch to s somewhat of a CAD style of drawing. Um, there still is a little bit of information that's not correct. The roof lines aren't shown exactly correctly. Um, the rear of the house is missing, so the context of this addition is missing. Um, and I have discussed that with him, but uh, actually because the last one was denied, I asked him to turn in a separate application, which I did not receive till last week. But we did notice it based on the fact that he was coming back because he didn't have his opportunity. So in order to do this, what I would do is I would put it on the next agenda, take it off if I don't get some some more information, but we found the drawings as, I, I want to be correct here, it, it, to be not as informative as we would have liked them to be. So, um, you know, and I, I certainly not in the habit of just wanting this application applicant to keep paying money and coming back. So if there's a, that's why I asked about the procedural question. No, and so. then as far as the procedure is, I mean, there's not, you know, I mean, I, I'm, sh I'm sure that we can come to some kind of agreement, some fee agreement, so. I've got a question to ask Hank. Uh, what is the city's status with him right now? Is he uh, under some sort of legal obligation to not proceed with anything else? He's or? under a stop work order. Okay. So he can't do anything until he gets these plans approved. Well, he really couldn't do anything, period, to begin with, because he didn't have any plans approved. And he went ahead and did quite a bit already, but um, you have- He's under, he's yeah, he's under stop work order um, for several things. One is no permit. Two is uh, he already had construction done without uh, a permit. 
and without inspections, and he is past the point where inspections would have been needed. So as a result, he's going to have to work that out, that part of it out with the building department, but he still has to satisfy the historic district commission, which has not yet been done. Okay. So I guess since uh, barring that nobody um, is present to present this application, I guess I'm looking for a motion. Is that I correct, would, Hank? I heard we yes. Have to make a motion. Mark. So we'll make a mo it's I think it's a motion to deny. Is that correct, Hank? That would be correct. Yeah, in view of the fact that he, there's no uh, real plan that's been submitted uh, and there's been no, we have not a clue as to what the, the original structure looked like where the proposed uh, alteration is going to be. Uh, I don't think it's even possible to make a decision, uh, and therefore I would move to deny the application. Can I entertain a second, please? I'll second it. Thank you, Martha. Um, we'll just do a roll call. Louise? Oh, uh, yeah, motion to deny. Mark, you made the motion. Um, Robert? Aye. Jim? Aye. Martha, I assumed you second, but aye. Steve, aye, and and I uh, make a motion or I vote to deny as well. So, so Hank, that seems to be we're into other business. Is there any other business that we need to attend to this evening? There, uh, just some information. We will be having a meeting next month. There is another plan in for an addition. Um, it's not either one of the two houses that you've seen tonight. So uh, it's not Groundhog Day then. It's not Groundhog Day. Uh, so that will be forthcoming um, along with, and I will pass the comments of the commission along to uh, Mr. Zacharias uh, to let him know that he's either going to come forward or the city at the, the city may continue uh, in a manner um, to explore its legal options. So, okay, so um, I guess that leads to, is there anybody um, available in the audience who'd like to have some public participation? Again, if you speak, please state your name and your address. Nobody's clicking off mute. So I'm gonna say we'll close public participation. And I guess we'll look for our favorite motion of the night. Anybody wanna make a motion to close? <laughs> I think everyone's going to vote aye. So we'll okay, just. So I have Steve and Louise. Is that acceptable with everybody for the motion in the second? That's fine. And um, is there anybody who's going to vote no? Then no. I think we'll call in a unanimous Hank and not have spares the roll call. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Great discussion tonight. It was great. Thanks. There it is. Good night, everyone. <laughs>